Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. In the past 30 years, employment nationwide in STEM occupations, the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math, has grown 79%. To put that into real numbers, STEM jobs totaled 9.7 million in 1990. By 2020, there were more than 17.3 million such jobs. Some Vermont high school students recently got the opportunity to explore their options in STEM education and potential STEM careers. It was part of the Vermont Science Olympiad held at the University of Vermont. Students from six high schools around the state participated in the Olympiad, which functions much like a team sport. It requires preparation, commitment, and practice. The Olympiad events emphasize hands-on participation, and they test student knowledge. Students are supported by their high school teachers and coaches, along with dozens of UVM graduate students, faculty, and staff who organize and coordinate the competition. Across the Fences, Ben Willis tells us more from the Olympiad. First place award for this year's Science Olympiad. All righty, we have St. Johnsbury Academy. <laughs> After preparing all school year, students from six Vermont high schools were in attendance at the Science Olympiad. The competitors were presented with a slew of challenges created by UVM graduate students. Hi, I'm Sarah Hobson and I'm a judge for Science Olympiad this year in the experimental design section. And this is a part where we can test students' ability to conduct experiments as we would as science professionals. We've kind of replicated an experiment involving flight of paper planes um, and groups have the opportunity to test a variety of variables and conduct an experiment that we test. We were just designing an um, experiment testing like you have a paper airplane, you throw it, what kind of variables can change how the paper airplane would fly or move, um, like drag, lift, that kind of thing. We're setting up the targets for the trajectory competition, so folks have their devices and they're going to launch a small ball from the starting zone and they're going to try and hit both of these targets. <laughs> We are getting a lot of knowledge from different aspects, such as like what is trajectory, how it works. I think it's a great way to collaborate and to like promote inter-school collaboration because especially in Vermont, we, our high schools are really far apart, so we don't have much opportunity to socialize. And I think this is a great way to meet like other teams and meet um, other kids with similar interests in science. Last year's champions from Burr and Burton Academy were in attendance, prepared to defend their title but excited to see more competitors than the previous year. I'm Isaac, I'm a junior, I'm the founder of Burn Burton Science Olympiad team. We had a robotics team previously, but there wasn't really any extracurriculars in the science area. So I grabbed a dozen people who I knew liked science from around the halls and we created a Science Olympiad team. This is our second year participating in Science Olympiad. Last year it really provided an opportunity and a space for students to connect over kind of a shared interest in STEM. It's a lot of fun. It helps you get um, a good handle on a lot of the topics in STEM that schools don't cover. Um, most high schools only cover chemistry, biology, and physics, whereas this has a ton of specialized areas that that doesn't have, like forestry or remote sensing. None of that stuff is in the high school curriculum. There was more for students than just various science challenges. As part of a program called Science Sparks, UVM graduate students offer discussions and tours of UVM facilities to open student eyes to the wide range of fields available to them. And it was really interesting to talk to the grad students about their research and kind of explore um, the career paths that one might take in the future in these fields. No matter where you start, it, like you can finish anywhere. You're all coming from very different backgrounds and very different opportunities but that doesn't matter. It's kind of what you make of yourselves going forward. It's kind of like a glimpse into your future, if that makes sense. It's a little window to the possibilities. And you see that there's so many different paths, that there's no wrong answer, and there's so many different interests. And STEM might seem like a small field when you're looking from the outside, but when you are really in it, you realize there's infinite doors. As long as you find a passion, you can kind of delve as far deep as you want to go. As the competition drew to a close, it was clear that for those participating, win or lose, the event was a mission accomplished. I feel like it's just a really fun competitive environment where you get to really apply what you've learned in school. 
The average uh, high school student who might not be so invested in science still gets a good grasp of how the scientific process works, like the engineering of prototyping and iteration is something you get a lot in the build events. And it also helps them get an insight into what college students are doing in the field. I did Science Olympiad all through middle and high school, and it's like, it's just a really awesome opportunity um, to connect in a totally different way. So I encourage everyone who's interested in STEM to do it. Um, and this is a great state to do it in because you get to come to an awesome place like UVM. Students were all smiles as they were draped in medals and reflected on their year-long effort to get here. So, so exciting. It was so fun. We met three times a week and we did a lot of studying and I know everybody else did a lot of solo, like independent studying too. Um, different people, different seasons, sports. We worked a lot of things around this. We're good. <laughs> Extracurricular programs like Science Olympiad offer young adults a glimpse into the future. Who knows what they will accomplish next? At the University of Vermont, I'm Ben Willis with Across the Fence. The Science Olympiad is co-hosted each year by the UVM Extension 4-H program and the university's College of Education and Social Services. Students, faculty, and staff from other UVM colleges volunteer and serve as event judges. Financial support is provided by Generac Power Systems. You can get more information about opportunities in 4-H by checking the website or by calling the state 4-H office at the toll-free number on your screen. New summer programs are being added, including a number of science-based events, as well as teen leadership and agricultural offerings. Since 1919, the Parsons family has been farming in the town of Richford. The farm was originally a dairy, but the third generation, Chet and Kate Parsons, sold the dairy cows and started raising sheep in the 1980s. Chet Parsons also worked as a livestock specialist for UVM Extension until his retirement in 2011. And Kate worked in the local school system until her retirement in 2015. Now Chet and Kate are retiring again. They recently told Seven Days that this summer will be their last summer with animals. One of our popular segments from our archives is lambing season on the Parsons farm. Keith Silva spoke with Chet about the arrival of spring lambs. We're at the Parsons farm in Richmond, Vermont. Uh, I'm Chet Parsons with my wife Kate. We've been raising sheep here for probably the last uh, 30 years or so. Uh, we're supposed to, supposed to be we're supposed to be retired, but uh, <laughs> during lambing we're probably working harder than we've ever worked. How many lambs on the ground this year, Chet? Uh, we've got just about 80. Just about 80, yeah. They started lambing about St. Patrick's Day, and we got the majority of them lambed in the first two and a half weeks or so. Of course, that's when it turned super cold, uh, which is, I guess, that's farming. <laughs> that's the way it works. So it was a little, a little trying this year, but you know, you hope to have nice, easy weather. It makes it a lot easier to, to deal with. One day, I think we had uh, five sets of twins and a set of triplets. Is that common? <laughs> well, it usually happens once or twice during lambing when, when it all happens. But, you know, with 80 lambs, you've got to get more than one a day. Between my wife and I, we spend quite a lot of time in the barn when they're lambing. You know, you've got to make sure. You, and, and I've, been, I've been raising sheep that are pretty good mothers, so, you know, I don't, don't, uh, we don't have to do that much as a rule, but you do have to take care of them. When you get, when you get, on, get up here and you find lambs, we put them in a lambing pen, you know, so give them a few days to get attached to each other, you know, so we can watch them and make sure they're doing okay, and then they get turned out with the rest. Sometimes you get some that don't have enough milk, and you have to supplement the milk. Uh, that's usually true with triplets. Usually sh the mother doesn't have enough milk to feed all three. And sometimes you get an older ewe that's put all of her energy into having two beautiful lambs, but she doesn't have enough milk to feed them, so you have to supplement the milk. It's, it's just part of the game. 
Are they rambunctious? Sometimes they form a lamb pack and tear around the barn here and kick up their heels and have a great time, yeah. Uh, but other times they're just happy to just lay and sleep and, you know, eat and sleep. <laughs> The singles that really grow fast, you know, they'll be ready for market in probably five months or so. The majority will be more like six or seven, and then there'll be some stragglers that'll drag later than that, but yeah. But, but our plan is to get them up and going in good shape before grass gets here, and then when grass gets here, because they're, they're pretty much totally grass-fed and grass-finished. I don't feed any grain. I do feel, feed some alfalfa pellets. Right now the lambs can get in the creep and get alfalfa pellets if they want. And when the mothers are in the lambing pens, uh, they get a little extra in the form of alfalfa pellets. But I don't feed any grain. Well, if you think you're gonna get rich doing it, don't do it because it, it's a challenge. But, um, and an, another thing, there aren't good markets available, so you pretty much have to develop your own markets, which we've done over the years. Uh, and that's always a challenge. Most, most farmers like the idea of raising animals. They don't like the idea of selling their product. So sometimes that's been a challenge, but uh, we've, we've been at it long enough, so we do pretty well. Our best wishes to Chet and Kate in their second retirement. And once again, thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.